everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. If you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials, so if that is something you are interested in, go ahead and subscribe. I also offer extra tutorials over on Patreon. I have that linked in the description below if you'd like to check that out. But before we get started, the only thing that you will need to do is download the color palette. I have it linked in the description below. It's totally free to download. Just open up the file that downloads and it will automatically pop into Procreate so that you can use the same colors as you follow along with the drawing today. I have noticed that lately when you import a color palette, it might add it to the very bottom of your color palettes list. So if you don't see it right away, look for it down there. Otherwise, the other option is to save it to your files in your color palettes. Click this plus button and then new from file and find the file where you downloaded it to import the swatches that way. I will also post the canvas dimensions, color profile, and layers needed on the screen and in the description below so that you can use those to set up your canvas. So take a minute to get everything ready and then come back and we will get started. Okay, this is the color palette that we'll be working with in today's video. So let's just go ahead and get started. We're going to start by making the background. It's going to be a gradient that's a little darker on top, lighter on the bottom. So that's gonna be the whole background. So we're gonna create that on layer one. We're gonna leave this background color layer alone. So on layer one, let's just grab the first color on the first row of the color palette and drag and drop to fill in our background. Okay. Then let's just zoom out a little bit so we can see our entire canvas. And on this same layer, we are going to grab the next color and line the second one on the top row. Grab our selection tool, set it to rectangle and turn on color fill. And we are going to start on the bottom left outside of our canvas and drag up until we cover like the bottom two thirds, leaving like a third on the top untouched. Let that go to fill it in. Click our selection tool to turn that off. Grab our next color and line the third color on the top row, same layer. Grab our selection tool again and cover up like the bottom third now with this lightest color. Selection tool again to turn that off and then we are just going to blur them all together. To do so, we'll just click our wand icon, click Gaussian Blur, and then we'll drag this up a good ways to like almost 50% about to get a nice blur between all of our colors to create this nice background. Okay, then we're gonna start from the bottom up. So we're gonna create the ground, two sets of bushes, one set of trees, and then we'll be able to complete our sky once that's all done. Then we will create the headstone and the ghost. Let's just go ahead and start on our ground. So that is going to be on a new layer on our layer menu right above our first layer. Grab this first color on the second row of the color palette. Grab our selection tool again, rectangle and color fill turned on, and we will just cover like a, just a little sliver on the bottom, maybe like a fifth perhaps, if you wanna put a fraction on it, and then let that go to fill it in. Now we're gonna add some kind of uh, shadows and highlights to it just to make it look a little less flat. So we're, to do that, we're going to go to our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, so that we only color within this shape that we just laid down. We'll grab the next color now, the second one on the second row. We'll switch our brush to the soft brush under the airbrushing category. Find that, this really big one at the top. Set the size to maybe 10%. And this is a slightly lighter color, so we'll just kind of add this in a few sections. You can't see it super well, but it gives a little variation. So just add a little bit of this. Okay, then we'll grab our next color and line the third one on the second row darker now and do kind of the same thing. So just add a few little sections of this kind of darker color just to give our ground a little bit more movement. So nothing too crazy there, just very simple. Okay, then we'll move on to our bushes now. So on our layer menu, let's add a new layer for our bushes. We'll drag it below our ground layer that we just created, still above our background gradient layer. We will grab the next set of colors now, so the next three on the second row. So we'll start with the fourth one. We'll grab the monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. We'll set that to like 30%. 
and we're just going to draw some bushes all the way across the screen. So I'm just going to start a little ways up from my ground on the left side here off my canvas. Make a curved line, another curved line, just kind of going in different directions, different heights, different sizes of curves. All the way down till we go off the right side of the screen. So since we cut it off on the edge of both sides of the screen, we should be able to fill in below it. But make sure it's all connected. That's why mine would not fill in. There we go. Okay, and then we're going to do a similar thing. We're going to add some shadows and highlights to this layer. So on our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock again. And now we're going to use our next two colors. So we have a slightly darker color, the fifth one on the second row. Let's grab that one. Switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category. Let's lower the size a little bit to like maybe seven or eight percent. And we'll just kind of add this all across the bottom of our bushes. So it's not that different, but it adds a nice little shadow. Then we'll grab the next color in line, sixth one on the second row, slightly lighter. And we'll add this just to the tops of our bushes to again add some variation there. Okay, and we'll essentially do the same exact thing again, just with a different set of colors, slightly darker. So, layer menu, add a new layer, drag it below the layer that we were just on, grab the next color in line, seventh one on the second row, switch back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab, still at 30%, and we will just do the same thing. So another set of bushes, I'll start off the left side, and I might make them like a little bit different, like I'll kind of go higher here and then lower and then just kind of whatever works going off the side of the screen, fill in below it. Same thing, we'll add a shadow and highlight. So on our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, grab our next color in line, slightly darker, the eighth one on the second row and switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category at seven or eight percent. And again, we'll just kind of add this to the lower areas of our bushes, whatever we can see there. And then switch to our lighter color, the ninth one on the second row, and add that to the tips of them. All the way across. That is awesome. We are just moving right along. Let's now go to our next thing, which is going to be a layer of really dark kind of trees behind this. So they're, they're not going to be anything real detailed, but they're just going to be lots of little kind of swooshy pointy lines. So they'll be really fun, really cool, really spooky looking. So let's add another new layer on our layer menu, drag it below the layer that we were just on, grab the ninth color on the top row now, this really, really dark one. Switch back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. We'll lower our size quite a bit to like 15% so that we can get some nice kind of pointy lines. Okay, and I'm just going to again start on the left side outside of my canvas a little higher than my last bush layer. And we're just going to make lots of little pointy lines like this. Going all the way across kind of varying heights, varying sizes. Making sure they all connect nicely so when you start again. So real quick, real fun, and then fill in below it. Awesome. Okay, so now we're going to add like a little of fog on the bottom of them. Nothing too crazy, but just to kind of give them also a little variation like everything else. So we'll go to our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, you know the drill. We'll grab the 10th color on the first row, last one in line. Switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category at 7%. And we'll just very lightly add a little bit of this to the bottom area of our trees. Again, nothing too crazy. Okay, now we're ready to move on to the rest of our sky. But we want to make sure that we have enough room for everything. So I want the tops of our trees to maybe be like a third of the way up my canvas at most. So I feel like they're almost halfway. It's a little too high. I'm just going to move everything down a little bit. So let's start with like our, our main ground layer at the top arrow tool. Let's drag that down just a little bit. 
If you have snapping turned on in the bottom left, it helps you keep everything in line. So everything should just be centered on the center yellow line and you should see yellow lines on the right and left side as well. That just means that they're not deviating to the right or left, which would then kind of cut off our shape and make it uneven on the sides, which we don't want. So I'm just gonna move that one down a little bit. We'll grab our bush one, move it down quite a bit. It can be pretty close to our ground. Grab our next one. We could move them all at once, but I'm just kind of using this as an opportunity also to just kind of place them, you know, and space them how I would like them to be. So again, I'll move my other bushes down a little bit more. Okay, so maybe something kind of like that. So again, the tops of my trees are maybe a third of the way up my canvas, but that looks pretty good. Now we'll just move straight onto our sky. So we're first going to draw the moon and then we will draw some streaks through the sky and our clouds. So let's just start with our moon. Let's go to our layer menu, add a layer at the very top. Grab our the first of our moon colors, which are these three really light ones starting our third row. So let's grab the first one on the third row, switch to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab at whatever size you have it is fine. Let's just go ahead and set it to 30%. We're just going to draw a nice big circle in the middle of the sky here. So draw a nice circular shape, hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth, and then touch your finger on the screen to make it a perfect circle. Nothing too huge, but a good size like so then drag and drop to fill in the color in the center. Okay, arrow tool on uniform if you need to resize it at all. And then I'm just going to center it on my canvas. So again, with snapping turned on in the bottom left, let's center it on our center yellow line right there. And I make it a teeny bit smaller and have a little more room between the trees and the bottom of my moon. So maybe about right there is good. Now we want to add these spots to the moon. So to do that, we'll go to our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock. Grab the next color and line the second one on the third row. Same monoline brush at 30% and we're just going to make some spots on the moon. So I'll just make kind of some oval shapes, hold them down until they turn perfectly smooth. And then we're gonna go fill them in. It's probably gonna overfill. So if you go to drag and drop to fill it in, it'll probably fill the whole shape. We don't want that. So when you go to fill it in, hold your pen on the screen and then slide to the left. You'll see this threshold at the top go down. Um, I slid it as far as I could and it still wasn't enough. So I just undid it and then we'll re-drop it and slide to the left some more until we get just our little crater to fill in. Okay, then we'll just keep on going. I'll make some just varying sizes of circles and ovals kind of all over. You can also just make one don't fill it in. Keep making the others. I'll make some going off the edge as well. Maybe another small one here. Okay, and then when you just have empty circles, we can go and drag and drop and fill one in. Then click this continue filling button at the top and then we can tap into the others to fill them in also. Okay, so just get a good kind of variety of those going and then we'll stay on this layer with alpha lock still turned on and we will make the edge of it a little bit lighter. So we'll grab our third color on the last row of the color palette. We will switch our brush to the soft airbrush under the airbrushing category. So we're going to go back and forth a little bit between the soft brush and the soft airbrush. So the soft airbrush is a lot thinner. So we'll use that one now. We'll set it to like 20%. And I'm just going to kind of go around the edge very lightly and add this glow. So you might not see it a ton right now, but when we go and make the glow around our moon, it'll be a lot more like evident. Yeah, just stick right to the edge. Even if you have like craters there, you can just cover up the edge of them. That's fine. Okay, so something like that. Now feel free to resize it anymore if you need to. I might make mine a little bit smaller again. Recenter it. Okay. And now we are going to make the glow around it. So to do so, we will go to our layer menu. We'll make a duplicate of our moon layer. Grab the one on the bottom, 
click on it and turn off alpha lock. Okay, now we can blur it to get a glow. So we'll click on our wand icon, click Gaussian Blur. We'll drag this up a little bit to maybe like 25%. Okay, and it's very faint, so we want it to be a lot brighter. So all we need to do is go to our layer menu, make a couple duplicates of it. So we'll slide to the left and hit duplicate. See, that looks much brighter, much better. I think I'll just probably stick with two because then we're going to add one more glow. So let's stick with two and see how that goes. We will add another layer on our layer menu, drag it below all of the moon layers that we have so far. So the moon and our two glows. We will grab the second color on the last row of the color palette. And we will switch back to our soft brush, the really wide one at the top. We'll set that to like 15%. And I'm just going to very, very lightly circle around our moon here like so very very lightly i just got a good circle i didn't hold it down or anything but i'm just kind of lightly doing that okay you can use your arrow tool if you need to resize it at all i make mine a little bit smaller and then just kind of recenter it on my moon here and then we will make it a little bit lighter it's a little too bright but if we just go to our layer menu, click the N on the layer to open up our options and lower the opacity a little bit. to so maybe like 70%, 60%, somewhere in there. But I think that all looks nice together. Get those to a place where you like it. And then I'm going to snap my glows together at least. So my three glow layers, I'll go to my layer menu, snap those together just to help save some layers. So we have our glow and our moon. Now we're going to add some streaks to the sky. So to do that, we'll add a new layer on our layer menu. We're going to drag it right down, right above layer one. So right above our background gradient layer. Okay, we're going to click on the N on this layer to open up our options. And we're going to change the layer style up to multiply. So this will give us like a darker color on our sky. Just with this gray color, the fourth one on the top row. So find that color, fourth one on the top row. We're going to stay on our soft brush. We're going to drop the size quite a bit to like 5%. And we are just going to add some kind of circles to the sky. So, I mean, not really circles, but like circular pieces. So like, I'm just going to kind of start here, work in like a circular motion, get a little streak there. I'll go down here, work in a circular motion, kind of just varying around to get some of this around our moon in our sky to add a little more fun to it so just a few pieces nothing too crazy like so okay and then to just help them blend into our sky a little bit better we're going to blur them so with our wand tool click dodge and blur and we'll just blur them a little bit maybe like 10 to 15 percent somewhere in there see what you like i'll set mine to 13. okay next up is the clouds so for those, we'll add a new layer at the very top of our layer menu. Okay, and then these four colors on the top row are our cloud colors. So starting with the fifth one right after the gray color that we just used. So fifth one on the top row, we'll start there. We'll switch back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab at 30%. And we are just going to draw some cloud shapes. So I'm going to start on the outside right side of my canvas, kind of close to the top here. I'm just going to make a curved line, curved line, curved line curved line and then we'll go back underneath making a few curved lines going off that way as well drag and drop to fill it in so just kind of little shapes like this i'm going to click my arrow tool on freeform skinny this one up a little it got a little too wide and then i'm going to move it up a little as well so it's kind of covering my moon that's kind of what i wanted this one to do just a little bit there at least okay so we'll just make a few more of those so i'll make maybe a small one in the top or left corner here that in we'll make another bigger one like on the bottom left here okay and we do want it to go behind our trees so we're gonna have to do some re some moving around so that is my bad i forgot about that and then on the right side here i'm going to have this next one go behind the trees entirely so just it's going to start right here on the right side 
It's going to go down a ways and then off the screen under our trees to fill that in. So the trees will cover that up. So let's do that moving around that we'll need to do. So on our layer menu, we need our clouds to be above our moon, but um, we want it to be behind our trees and then all these other layers. So let's just drag, let's just start dragging them down. So let's drag our glow layer down below our trees, drag our moon layer down below the trees, but above our glow, and then drag our cloud layer down below our trees, but above the moon. Okay, so that gets us the look that we're going for. Okay, so just something like this is good. Make any adjustments to these if you need to. Since they're all in the same layer, you can't adjust, you know, you can't use your arrow tool as much, but if you use your selection tool on freehand and turn off color fill, you can like select around one like this one here I want to adjust. You can select around it, click your arrow tool, and then you can adjust it. So on freeform, I might make this one a little wider so it goes out a little further, takes up a little bit more of our sky something like that so feel free to kind of adjust any of these you can also rotate them so this one i might need to rotate a little bit this way and then i will make sure it still goes off the edge on the right side then we will do as we've been doing we'll add some highlights and shadows to them so on our layer menu click on this layer with our clouds and turn on alpha lock and we will use this next color first the sixth one on the top row the lighter one switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category we'll keep it pretty low at like five to seven percent and this is just going to be our highlight color so we're just going to add this lightly to the tops of all of our clouds kind of following their curves a little bit like so we'll do that to each one Pretty lightly if you can to kind of let it fade into the rest of our cloud there. But we do want a good highlight, so. Okay, then we'll add a little shadow to it. So the next color in line, seventh one on the top row. And we'll just kind of add this to the bottom, like half of it, I would say, pretty lightly to kind of let it blend through. This one down here we can't see much of, but I'll just add a teeny bit there. And then lastly, we'll grab the darkest color of this set, which is the eighth one on the top row. And we'll add even more of this darker color to the very bottoms of them pretty lightly. Just add a little bit more to it. But yeah, pretty light. We don't want a huge contrast there. Just want a little more variation than we had. Okay, then that is it for the clouds. So those are done. Our sky is done, our moon is done, all of our background pieces are done. So that means that we can move right along to our tombstone, the kind of main event here. So, so we're going to be doing a lot of the same things like making our shapes and then adding some variation to them. So let's go ahead and add this to the very top of our layer menu. Add a new layer there. We are going to turn on symmetry for this. So let's go to the gear icon under canvas. Click to turn on our drawing guide, click edit drawing guide, and select symmetry. You should see a vertical line here. If you do not, you might need to click vertical under the options here, and then click done. Then let's just go to our layer menu, make sure that this layer that we're on now says assisted. It should, if it doesn't, just click on it and turn on drawing assist. Okay, and we'll get straight into our tombstone colors. So that's pretty much all the other colors on the bottom row next to our moon colors. So we're going to start with this fourth one on the bottom row. We are going to start with our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab at 30%. Okay. And with symmetry turned on, we're going to make our main shape. Then we'll make the base of it next. But our main tombstone shape, it's going to have rounded corners. So that's why we have symmetry turned on here. We are going to start just a little ways from the symmetry line. I'll start on the right side, kind of right under our moon glow, like right where our glow is and we'll make a good circle. Hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth and then touch your finger on the screen to make it a perfect circle. We're gonna set it pretty big. 
So we're getting nice rounded edges. So maybe something like this. Click the circle button at the top if you need to adjust it at all. You can move them closer together, further apart, whatever you need to do, you can resize them. If you need to resize them, don't touch on one of the blue dots that will extend it into like an ellipse. We want it to stay a circle, but if you touch in between two of the blue dots, you can resize it. So set a good big size though. We want them pretty close together. They should be overlapping a little bit, but there should just be a little bit of room in the center for us to connect them across the top. So let's do that next with our pen tool again. We'll just start kind of here, right on the top of our right circle. And I'm going to draw a slightly curved line towards the middle. Hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth or straight. Mine turned into a line. If I click this line button at the top, it'll hopefully give me an arc option. It did, so we just want a slight arc connecting them. Let's zoom in here and adjust them. So it makes a very smooth transition from one to the next. So from the circle to the middle, we just want it to be like one smooth line. Okay, back to our pen tool, we'll make just some straight sides. So coming right off the side of the circle here, I'm just gonna make a straight up and down line, hold it down until it turns perfectly straight. Touch your finger on the screen to make it perfectly vertical. I'm gonna extend it down here just a little ways past like the top of my ground, maybe almost halfway through it is fine. Okay, but then most importantly, click this line button at the top to adjust it. And we just wanna make sure it meets up nicely with the circle here on the side. So we don't want it sticking out. We don't want it like too far in. We want it to just line up right with the side of our circle here for a kind of seamless transition there. Okay, then we'll connect across the bottom in a horizontal line. Hold it down, touch your finger to the screen to make it perfectly horizontal. Now we're gonna fill it in, but we need to increase our threshold from when we filled in our moon before. So let's just drag and drop, hold our pen on the screen and increase the threshold quite a bit to like over 50% is good. Then click this continue filling button at the top and fill in the rest of it. Like so. Okay, so this is the start of our tombstone. It's looking great. We'll be able to move it, resize it, all that good stuff. If you need to resize it right now, go ahead and do so. But we will have our little base covering part of this bottom part. So don't worry too much about the length of it but just you know as long as the the rest of it looks good to you go ahead and leave it like so i might want my top to curve just a little bit more so i'm going to zoom in and do a better curve on the top so i did another curved line held it down i'll edit it so that i can kind of adjust it here But just to get a little more of a curve there. I like that a little bit better. Okay, now let's go ahead and add some shadows and highlights to our base shape here. We'll go to our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, click on it again, turn off drawing assist. No more symmetry on this layer for now. So we will then go to our color palette and grab the next color in line, the fifth one on the bottom row switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category we'll set it to like 10 percent okay in this darker color we're just going to kind of go slightly on the right edge just slightly just the teeniest little bit on like the right top corner very very lightly and then kind of starting on this like to the left of center here on the top we'll kind of cover this whole kind of left side and then a little bit across the bottom kind of curving a little bit okay left side left side all covered like so then we'll switch to our next darker color the sixth one on the bottom row and we'll just again start very close to the left edge this time and just cover that whole left edge again very lightly when we're kind of trying to smooth them together but that looks good so just a good kind of variation of colors on the front here then we're eventually going to move this to the right so our moon is going to hit like the top right corner and kind of the right side so we are going to add an extra highlight there so we're going to switch to the seventh color on the bottom row of the color palette the really really light one and we're going to switch our brush to the soft airbrush again the thinner one okay we're going to set that to like 30 percent and we're just going to zoom in here and just on the right side here the top right corner I'm going to start there just at the very edge and hit that really nicely. And then I'm going to go all the way down the right side as well. I 
get a good amount on there. Good highlight there. Beautiful. Okay, now we're going to make the back layer, which is going to be a little darker, which makes our headstone look a little 3D. So to do that, we'll go to our layer menu. We'll make a duplicate of this layer. So slide to the left and hit duplicate. Grab the bottom one, leave alpha lock on. And we are going to grab the ninth color on the bottom row. So one from the end. We're going to go back to our layer menu with this layer with alpha lock turned on, click on it and click fill layer. You won't see it on your canvas yet, but you'll see it on your layer menu and turn this darker gray. Grab your arrow tool. We're just going to drag it straight up on our vertical yellow line here so we can see a little bit of it peeking out just a little bit like so. And we're going to add a little bit of definition to it. So leave alpha lock on, grab our 10th color on the bottom row, switch back to our soft brush, the bigger one. Set the size to like 5%, pretty low. And we're just going to add like a little bit of shadow towards the middle. So like on the bottom edge of what we can see of this back piece, we're just going to add a little bit of a shadow there with this slightly darker color. Nothing too crazy. That is it. Okay, next we're going to make the base before we move on to all the details on our headstone here. So we are going to go to our layer menu, add a new layer at the very top. Click on it and turn on drawing assist so that we can use symmetry again. We're going to grab our base color again, the fourth one on the bottom row, and we're going to switch back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab, still at 30%. Okay, and then our base piece is going to be similar to our top piece. It's going to have rounded corners and then it'll be straight across the top, straight on the side, straight on the bottom. So Let's just start a little ways out from the top, from the bottom right corner here. I'll draw a good circle again. Hold it down till it turns perfectly smooth. Touch your finger on the screen to make it a perfect circle. Pretty small this time, maybe about like this. Then we'll draw straight across the top. So starting at the very top point of my right circle, I'll draw towards the middle. Hold it down, touch my finger to the screen. Click line at the top if you need to, to adjust it to just make sure it kind of, again, like is seamless into this circle. Okay, then we will do a little bit on the right side here. So a vertical line down from the very right side of this circle, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen. Nothing too crazy, maybe about like this. Click this edit line button if you need to, to move it around and line it up nicely. And then we will connect across the bottom. So from the point here all the way to the middle, hold it down until it turns perfectly straight. Touch your finger to the screen to make it perfectly horizontal. Again, click the edit line button and just make sure this corner meets up nicely. Like so. Then we can fill it in just our circle and our main piece there. So now this is the base of our headstone. Right away, I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller arrow tool on uniform. I'll just downsize it a little bit. I'll recenter it on my center yellow line, maybe even a teeny bit further. And then I'm just going to move it up a little bit so it kind of covers a little bit more of my headstone. So maybe about like this. I think that is kind of good placement there. Now we'll do a lot of the same stuff that we did before. So we'll go to our layer menu, click on this layer, first turn off drawing assist. Click on it again, turn on alpha lock. Okay, we'll get our next color in line here, the fifth one on the bottom row. Switch to our soft brush under the airbrushing category. Keep the size pretty low, maybe like six or seven percent. And I'm just going to do this on like the bottom left corner and then across the bottom a good ways, maybe like roughly halfway through. Okay, then we'll grab our darker color, the sixth one on the bottom row, and just keep that closer to the edge on the left corner and then across the bottom. So a little bit more on the left side, just because again, that part will be more in shadow when we move it to the left side of our picture with our moon being to the right of it. Then we're going to add the highlight edge. We're going to add it pretty much all the way across the top and then on the right corner. So same thing as before, grab the seventh color on the bottom row, switch to our soft airbrush, the skinnier one. 
still set to like 30%. And we will just first go across the top. Like I won't do quite the left corner, but just straight across the top, starting right next to the left corner. And then on the top right corner, we'll round down that and then down the right side just a teeny bit. Okay, that's it for our base piece now. But now we are going to make the back side of this bottom piece. So just like we did for this top piece. So on our layer menu, let's let's make a duplicate of this base piece. So slide to left and hit duplicate. We'll drag this new one below all of our gravestone pieces that we already have. So right here at the very back, leave alpha lock turned on. Grab the ninth color on the bottom row. Back to our layer menu, click on this layer, click fill layer. Again, you won't see it on your canvas yet, but we will see it in the moment. Just grab your arrow tool and drag it up a little bit so that we can see the, so we can see it behind our other piece there. The angle that we're looking at it, it's going to get a little smaller like this. So we're just going to downsize it a little bit on uniform. So downsize it a little bit, recenter it, and then you should kind of see it looks like it's just going like this, just a teeny bit, nothing too crazy. It's just a little bit smaller in the back there. Okay, we'll leave alpha lock turned on, grab our 10th color on the last row, last one in line, switch back to our soft brush again, the bigger one at like 5%, and just the, we'll add the teeniest little bit of shadow to kind of like the bottom side of this shape here. Add a little shadow in there. Okay. And then that completes like the shape of our tombstone. So now we just need to add the details on top of it. So we'll add the RIP, the skull and the cracks to it. And then we'll be able to resize it, move it, whatever else we need to do. We'll make the ghost and we'll make a little shadow under our gravestone once it's placed as well. And then that will be it. So we're gonna leave it on the center for now cause we still need to use symmetry. So the next thing that we're going to do is make the RIP on our gravestone. So let's add a new layer at the very top of our layer menu. Click on it and turn on drawing assist so that we can use symmetry. And we're first going to make the outline like the rectangle that our letters will sit in. So the rectangle will look recessed and then the letters will look like they pop out. So we're just going to make a rectangle. Grab the 10th color on the last row of the color palette. Grab our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. Set that to 30%. And we are going to start down and to the right of our top right corner here a little bit. Draw straight towards the center. Hold it down until it turns perfectly straight. Touch your finger on the screen to make it perfectly horizontal. On the right side here, we'll, draw, we'll go down a little ways vertically. Hold it down. Touch your finger to the screen. Click edit line at the top if you need to adjust it at all. And then we'll draw across the bottom here horizontally. Hold it down, touch your finger to the screen, click the edit line button to move it around so we make a nice rectangle. Okay, let's go ahead and resize it if you need to, either on uniform or freeform if you need to change the shape. I might do freeform and make it a little taller and then just recenter it kind of right here. I make it a little bit wider also and recenter it. So if you resize it, just make sure to recenter it. And then we are going to blur the edges of this rectangle a little bit. So wand icon, dodge and blur. We'll drag this up just a little bit to like three or four percent. Okay, and now we just want to kind of rough up the edges just a little bit so it's not so perfect looking. So with our same color, same layer, we're just going to grab, switch our brush to the soft airbrush under the airbrushing category. Set pretty low to like 10%. And I'm just going to kind of follow the outsides of these lines very, very lightly, just to kind of create a little bit more, um, just kind of variation to them and a little bit more like lightness to this top edge. So I'm just kind of going over them lightly, not holding anything down. So it just kind of roughs it up a little bit, blurs it a little bit more on this outer edge, which is what we're looking for. So very, very lightly, just follow all of your edges. Symmetry is still turned on, so we just need to do one side. Okay, and then it just kind of helps thicken them up a little bit as well. 
Okay, so something kind of like this is what we should have now. And then we are going to change the color on this bottom and left side. So we'll go to our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, click on it again, turn off drawing assist, grab our lighter color, the seventh one on the bottom row. We can just keep our same soft airbrush. And just on this top left corner here, I'm gonna cut it at like a 45 degree angle on the like left side. It's right where that corner is, just cut it at a diagonal. And then we'll just cover this entire left side. So just keep drawing so you cover it all up and across the bottom as well, all the way down until we get to this other corner where we'll again kind of cut a diagonal like so. And look at that, a perfect little recessed area for our RIP to go. Okay, and now it's time to add our text to this rectangle here, our RIP. So we are going to add that now. We don't need to add a new layer for it. It will automatically add itself on a new layer. So we'll go to the gear icon under add, click add text. It'll set itself to whatever color we were just on, but let's go ahead and with it selected, switch our color to the color that we do want, which is going to be this eighth color on the last row of the color palette. Okay, then with our text still selected and our keyboard up, bring your keyboard up if you need to. Double tap the arrow tool to turn on caps lock and we'll type RIP. Double tap our text again, and then click this font area to open up our font options. We're going to set our font to Futura Condensed Extra Bold. Then we just need to adjust our size. So I'm gonna adjust my size up a little bit, but most importantly, my tracking, we're gonna increase quite a bit to space out our letters a little bit more. So I'll just set it to like 45 for my size, 40 for my tracking, somewhere around there, and we'll see how that looks. So grab our arrow tool, drag it down into our rectangle here. Okay, just resize it if you need to. If you need to adjust the tracking or size from your font area again, go ahead and just tap into it, double tap to select your font, click the button to bring up all of your options here and then you can increase your tracking and stuff. But this looks pretty good for mine. I'm gonna stick with like 45 points for my size, 40 for my tracking. And I think that looks good. You can still resize it with your arrow tool if you need to. But otherwise I think that looks great. And then now we are going to add another layer behind it in a different color to make our layers look 3D. And then we'll add some highlights and shadows and stuff to our letters as well to make them pop even more because right now they look kind of faded. So to continue, we will just go to our layer menu on this RIP text layer, click on it and click rasterize. And that just means it's more of an image now and not a text layer anymore. So we can't change the text itself. We can't change the font, anything like that. So make sure you like the way all that looks, rasterize it. And then we will click on this layer, turn on alpha lock. Slide to the left and make a duplicate of it. Grab the bottom one. Grab the dark color here, the sixth one on the bottom row. Go back to our layer menu, click on this layer, click fill layer. Again, you won't see it on your canvas yet, but then grab our arrow tool and we're just going to drag it down and to the left a little bit, like so. Nothing too crazy, maybe about right there. I'll go to my layer menu, click on this layer, turn off alpha lock now. And now we are going to, on this layer in the back, connect our letters together so they look like blocks and not like a shadow. So to do so, we'll grab our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab, same darker color still. And let's drop our size pretty low to like 5%. And I'm just going to connect each of these where they come apart with a line. So I'm just gonna draw my size even further to like 3%. Do a tiny line there, nothing too precise. I didn't hold it down or anything even. So just a nice little kind of connection. Fill in any other gaps that need to be filled in. Next, my eye will have one on each side. And my P will have a couple. So really just the corners, the curves, we don't need to worry about. 
Okay, so that looks awesome. That already looks better, nice and 3D. So now we'll go back to our top layer and add all of our different highlights and shadows and stuff to just give them a little more dimension. So back on our layer menu, go to this top layer. Alpha lock should already be turned on. Okay, and then again, this was our base color. So then this color, the fourth one on the bottom row is a little bit darker than that. So we'll use that for a little bit. Let's grab that switch to our soft brush under the airbrushing category the larger one drop the size super duper low like two to three percent and we are just going to add this maybe on the lefter sides you won't really be able to see it much but we just want a little variation there okay then let's grab our darker color still the fifth one on the bottom row and this will add on the left and bottom edges as well very, very lightly, just to add some more variation. Nothing too crazy though. And then that's it, we won't use the next darkest color because that matches the edge that we just added. So we'll just switch next to this seventh color on the bottom row, a really, really bright one that we use for all of our bright edges. And we will again switch our brush to the soft airbrush again. Under the airbrushing category, the skinnier one at like 5%, really, really low. And we will again just highlight the top right corners. So for the R, we'll do the top and right side of this curve. And we'll do the right bottom edge of this straight line. And then we'll also hit a little bit right on the inner edge here, the straight line right there where our moon would hit. And then this straight line right here towards the bottom where our moon would hit as well. Okay, next up our eye, we're just going to do the top and right corners, the top and right sides, plus the corner a little bit. Nothing too crazy there. And then our P will do similar to our R, so the top and right part of this curve. The right inner, the inner little line here and then the bottom line a little bit as well. And then that is it for our letters. So they look nice and just stone-like and nice and perfect with our picture there. So if you need to resize them or anything, you can. You can go to your layer menu. You can select the top layer, the bottom layer, slide right on it to select it also. Arrow tool on uniform and you can like move it around. You can switch it to free form, kind of whatever you need to do, re replace it, whatever works. Okay, and then just to take it a little step further, we're going to add a tiny shadow around these letters as well on our main tombstone layer. So go back to your layer menu, find your main tombstone layer down here. Switch to the sixth color on the bottom row of the color palette. We will still use our soft airbrush, the skinnier one, but let's increase the size a little bit to like 10%. And then on the bottom and left side of each of these letters, we're just going to very, very lightly add a little tiny bit of a shadow nothing too crazy very very light so drop your brush size if you need to at all if this is just being too big for you just to get a really nice light layer there Okay, so that just helps even a little bit more, make them look a little bit more embedded in our stone. Okay, and then once that's done, let's go ahead and sync these two layers together on our layer menu so that we save a layer there. We can even sync it with our rectangle so that those three are all together. So that just helps save some layers as we go. Okay, so then next up is our skull. We're going to essentially do the same thing without the rectangle around it. We're going to do the same thing for our skull. We'll draw it. We'll make a background layer that's darker. We'll add the like highlights and stuff to the top part and a slight shadow around it. So for our skull, we're going to use symmetry again. So let's just add that at the very top of our layer menu, a new layer for our skull. Click on it and turn on drawing assist. Grab our eighth color on the bottom row of our color palette and switch back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. We'll just set it back up to like 30%. So 
So we're going to start with a circle. So right under our rectangle here, we'll just draw a nice good sized circle. Hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth. Touch your finger on the screen to make it a perfect circle. Since we have symmetry turned on, you might have like two circles. So if you click the circle button at the top, like you technically drew two circles with symmetry turned on. But let's just go ahead and bring them together in the center so that they kind of become one circle here. Resize it if you need to, again, by touching in between two of the blue dots. I might make mine a little bit smaller. And again, just kind of overlap them till they look like one circle right under our rectangle here. Go ahead and fill it in. Then we'll grab our eraser. It is also on the monoline brush. It is also at 30%. And I'm just going to erase a slightly curved line across the bottom here, like maybe two thirds down on my circle. So about two thirds down, I'm gonna start outside, curve a line towards the center with this eraser. Hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth and then adjust it so that it kind of makes one nice arc all the way across like so, kind of cutting off our skull there. I might move it up a little bit. So we kind of cut it off a good amount. So something kind of like this. Then we'll grab our eraser tool and just erase everything else below that. So we're only left with this top section. Okay, from here, we'll grab our pen tool again and we will just create like the teeth. So this is like the top of our skull where our eyes and our nose will be. And then we'll draw like the jaw. So a little bit in on the right side here, I'm just going to draw a straight line down, almost vertical, the teeniest bit leaning like in at the bottom. Draw it down just a good amount there. Then draw it across the bottom horizontally, hold it down, touch your finger on the screen to make it perfectly horizontal and fill it in. Okay, so that is the start of our skull. Now we're going to erase the eyes and the nose out of it. So let's grab our eraser tool again on the monoline brush, same layer with symmetry still turned on. I have it set to 30%. And I'm just going to start a little ways from the symmetry line over on the right side here, just in this upper area. And we're going to erase an eyeball. It's going to be like a very rounded triangle. So I'm gonna start with a shape like this, erase the middle of it so it's at this angle here. Then I might just round it a little bit more on the side so we have no like straight sides really nice and round okay then the nose a little bit below this i'll drop the size of my eraser to like 10 percent okay i'll just start on the symmetry line here just kind of right towards the middle or bottom of my eyeballs i'll draw a line going this way with my eraser hold it down until it turns perfectly straight and then from there i'll just kind of draw a curved line and then back to the middle so we get kind of a shape like this for its nose. Okay, that's looking really good. Um, my bottom line here is a little long, I think, so I might erase some of it. So just straight across the bottom here with my eraser, I'm just gonna erase another horizontal line. Then erase some more just to kind of erase, just to kind of make this a little bit shorter. Otherwise, that's looking great. Now we just need to erase a few little chips in the bottom. So let's turn off drawing assist to do this so we don't have symmetry anymore. So on our layer menu, click on this layer, turn off drawing assist. Same eraser at 10%. And I'm just going to start a little from the right side and erase a little tiny kind of really sharp triangle at the bottom. Erase anything else inside it. Then I'll go over a little bit and I'll erase a bigger one. Hold it down each time so our lines turn perfectly straight and erase what's left there. Okay, and then that is it for my skull. So I am going to grab my arrow tool on uniform. I may make it a little bit bigger. Recenter it here. Um, we just want enough room for some cracks on our tombstone. So we'll have like a crack on the right side. When we have a crack going through the bottom left and a little crack on the top. So just a good size here, nothing too crazy. And then right under our rectangle. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing that we did for our letters. So on our layer menu, for the skull layer, click on it and turn on alpha lock. Slide to the left and make a duplicate of it. Grab the bottom one. Grab the six color on the bottom row of the color palette. Click on this layer on the layer menu, the one on the bottom and click fill layer. Arrow tool, drag it down and to the left a little bit. Okay, back to our layer menu. Click on this layer, turn off alpha lock now. Same color 
we're going to grab our monoline brush still drop the size quite a bit to like five percent and we are again just going to connect any of these lines that we need to so we'll connect this corner here connect this corner here connect this corner here fill in anything else okay and then even this nose piece i'm just going to connect it a little bit you might not be able to see yours but i could see mine so that needs to be connected also up oh, and this right side here maybe just the littlest bit okay so make sure it all looks pretty cohesive and then we can go back to our top layer and add a kind of like our shadows and stuff so in our layer menu go back to our top skull layer and again we used this eighth color on the last row as our base color so let's just first start with this fourth color on the last row switch back to our um, soft brush under the airbrushing category the bigger one set to like four percent or so and we will just kind of add a little bit of this just kind of anywhere just maybe in the center or something but not too much then we'll grab our next color in line the fifth one on the bottom row and this will be our main shadow color so we'll add this to like the left side and bottom area a bit like so and then lastly we will add our main highlight color so we'll grab the seventh color on the bottom row switch back to our soft airbrush set that to like 10 percent still and again we'll start we'll highlight the top right side of this curve and then the other places that it would hit are like this bottom right line i'm going to drop my size a little bit more to like five percent to hit the inside of these lines here so the left side where the moon would hit same thing on the nose it'll be the left side a little bit right here and then the eyeballs as well it'll be the left side of them and the bottom okay so do that for our skull and then that completes him so once that's all said and done go back to our layer when you snap those two layers together so that they're all in one layer completed let's go back to our main tombstone layer here to make our shadow now grab the sixth color on the last row of the color palette same soft airbrush at 10 percent we'll do again and we're just going to add a little bit of shadows kind of wherever we can so like the inside top right corners of the eyeballs would cast a little shadow just anywhere i guess next to our dark color here so the dark color that we added just again very very lightly add a little bit of a shadow next to all that just to help really meld him into our tombstone lastly for our headstone gravestone tombstone we are going to add the cracks to it so that'll be pretty quick pretty simple we'll add some cracks to the top and to the base then we'll move it and add our ghost so on our layer menu add a new layer right above our gravestone click on it and set it to a clipping mask grab the ninth color on the bottom row of the color palette and switch back to our monoline brush let's keep that size pretty low we'll do like 20 percent and we are just going to I'll start on the top left corner here so we'll just kind of do two straight lines here i don't hold them down or anything connect them at the top because they are on their own layer but you can't see it and then fill them in so that's like my first one i'll do one in the bottom left here kind of going all the way through it so i'll kind of go boom 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 and then next to it i'll kind of go boom 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 again i'll just kind of fill this one in with my brush since it's pretty skinny okay then on the left side here i'll do one that kind of goes like down and then in a little bit and then kind of the same thing on the way back and then again i'll just fill this in with my brush okay 
I will go to my layer menu, click on this layer and turn on alpha lock now. So we only draw within the shapes that we laid down. I'll grab the 10th color on the bottom row of the color palette, slightly darker than the one that we just used and switch to my soft airbrush under the airbrushing category, the skinny one set to like 10% and we will just add a little bit of a shadow kind of inside these just to kind of give them a little bit more depth. This one especially I'll add like a lot on the left side just because to make that whole area darker so that it stands out a little bit more against our darker left side there and then a little bit throughout it. Here I'll just kind of focus on the middle again. Okay we'll do the same exact thing on our base now. So I'll find our base layer, add a layer right above it, click on it, turn it to a clipping mask, grab, switch back to our ninth color on the bottom row, switch back to our monoline brush. Okay, I will similarly make a streak through it kind of on the right side here. So I'll go like boom, 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 boom something kind of like this okay then on the left side here i'll maybe do a little chunk cut out of it connect that at the top so i can just fill it in okay we'll just do the two and then we'll again go to our layer menu click on this layer turn on alpha lock grab our darker color the last one on the last row and switch back to our soft airbrush and add a little depth to them, like so. Okay, and then believe it or not, that is it for our tombstone. So I know that was a lot of work. Good job. Now we can move it and resize it. So on our layer menu, I'm not gonna snap anything together because I don't wanna I don't want to do that, but I will just select all of my gravestone layers. So I'll start with my skull at the top, slide right on my RIP, slide right, 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 right however many layers you have till we get to this last base layer that's behind everything, the darker like base layer. Click this group button. So then we just have this group of layers. I'll click the arrow to just minimize it on my menu here. But then with the group select, we can just grab our arrow tool on uniform. We can downsize the whole thing and we can move it around. So I'm just gonna move it a little closer to the left side here, nothing too crazy. And then just kind of place it here where we see a little bit of our ground still underneath it. It's just kind of right underneath my moon here. So just as big or as small as you want. Again, just a little bit of ground showing so that we can make a little shadow under it. So it's even like past my symmetry line. It's not like all the way on the right side. It's still past my symmetry line a little ways. Now we'll add the ghost. So on our layer menu, let's add a new layer to the very top. Grab our white color, the 10th one on the second row, last one in line. Switch back to our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab set to 30 percent and to start our ghost we're just going to start with a circle so just kind of right up in the upper right corner here of my tombstone i'm just going to make a perfect circle hold it down till it turns perfectly smooth touch your finger on the screen to make it a perfect circle set a good size and fill it in if you need to adjust the size right now go ahead and click the arrow tool on uniform and adjust it but we can continue on making our ghost and you can also adjust it later so from the left side here, right on the edge, I'm going to start there. I'm going to kind of curve down into the right quite a ways. Right side here, I'll do the same thing. I'll start there, curve down into the right a little ways. It gets kind of skinnier towards the bottom. So I'll maybe do that a little bit again. Get a little skinnier there. So something kind of more like that. Then on the bottom here, I will just kind of make a few points. So I'll go in, I'll go out a little further in out a little bit and then we want to connect to this one so out to connect okay then we will fill that in and then you can kind of smooth anything out so it's a little long um to fix that i'm going to instead of squishing him from top to bottom i'm just going to grab my selection tool on freehand and I'm just kind of cut him off through the middle select around the bottom half arrow tool and i'm just going to drag that up a little bit See if that kind of works, maybe something like that. And then I can go through and kind of smooth him out with my eraser or my pen tool still. So I'll just kind of erase that little bit that popped out. And then with my pen tool, I'll just kind of smooth it out. 
keep that curve going like so. Same thing on the left, on the right side here. I'll use my eraser tool to kind of just make that transition a little smoother. Okay, so smooth it out a good amount. And then that's it. I might rotate him a little bit. He's like leaning this way. So I'm going to grab my arrow tool, rotate him this way a little bit. Again, you can resize him, make some more adjustments, whatever you need to do. Now to make him see through, we'll just go to our layer menu on this layer, click the end to open up our options and drag the opacity down a little bit. I'm going to stick maybe around 75 to 80%, I would say. Maybe a little bit brighter than that. Maybe we'll go to like 85 somewhere in there whatever you think looks good on top of that we're going to give him a slight blur so now go to our wand icon click gaussian blur and drag this up just a little bit like five percent at the most to give him a little blur to his edges okay then his eyeballs will go to our layer menu add a new layer grab the ninth color on the top row of the color palette same monoline brush and we will just draw two ovals for his eyes. So just up here, I'll draw one good oval, hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth. Click the edit ellipse button if we need to. I'll just adjust it a little bit and fill it in. And I'll make another one next to it. Maybe a slightly different size. Hold it down as well, edit it as well. But again, maybe a slightly different size and fill it in. They're a little too big. I'm just going to grab my arrow tool on uniform downsize it a little bit and then I might just space them out a little bit so with my selection tool on freehand I'll just select around the right one and just kind of move him over a little bit like so so just kind of set them where you like them and then that is it for our ghost so then lastly we just need a slight shadow underneath our gravestone so to do that we'll go to our layer menu we will add a layer right above our ground layer here so it should be that on top of all of like our bushes and trees and stuff it should be right under our tombstone add a layer right above that click on it set it to a clipping mask click the n on this layer and drag it up to multiply grab our gray color again the fourth one on the top row so we used this to make our streaks in the sky so fourth color in the top row and switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category the thicker one set to maybe 10 percent and we will just across the bottom of the tombstone here make a nice little shadow to kind of ground it into the ground here like so with that i will go to my gear icon i will go under canvas and turn off the drawing guide so our symmetry line goes away and we can take a look at our finished picture here so with that said, that is it for our drawing today. So I hope you had fun. I hope that you liked the way that yours turned out. I hope you maybe learned a few things. If you would like to see more tutorials from me in the future, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And again, if you want to see any extra tutorials, I have some available over on Patreon. And that is linked in the description below if you want to check that out. If you would like to share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it. So go ahead and post it and then tag me so that I can check it out. And while you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching.